Buongiorno. Ten minutes after completing Lies of P, I booted up the demo for Inotria, the last song, like going from Mama's Macaroni to Tesco's Tin Meatballs. The shell shock that ensued made me want to bash my face into a bolognese. Inotria is the latest Lords of the Fallen like to hit the spotlight. Originally set to drop on June 21st, Inotria was delayed until September, thanks to our Lord and Saviour, Michael Zaki. Grazie. A blessing in disguise as the demo clarified the title has some issues to fix before release. However, Inotria does have the potential to cement itself in souls like Hall of Fame. You guys Fame. all think you're so much better than me! The setting promises a sunny take on the usually gritty and gothic areas we're accustomed to in the genre. Combined with the mesmerizing art direction, Inotria brings its environments to life. Inspired by Italian folklore, the world is trapped in an eternal plague called the Conovaccio, the second worst thing to happen to Italy after pineapple on pizza. And Mussolini too, probably, that was bad as well. It's up to you, the maskless one, to free the world from eternal stasis. Although several games have put a twist on the Souls formula in terms of gameplay, this is the first time to flip the tone on its head, apart from Crab Souls. I need to get around to playing that. The opening area really nails the atmosphere, enemies can be seen dancing and laughing in the reverie, but the underlying sense of mania reminded me of the streets of Yarnum and Bloodborne, despite the complete tonal contrast. Although I wouldn't describe the level design as interconnected, it has a nice verticality with plenty of nooks and crannies to explore. So, the devs have done a top job at making the player feel immersed in the world. Unfortunately, a lot of this is undone by poor optimization. Now, this is just a demo, so do take my criticisms with a pinch of salt. I don't know if this was exclusive to PS5, but the demo suffered from horrendous stuttering, the likely culprit being Unreal Engine. What the fuck is wrong with you? Coupled with motion blur, it meant the frame rate was fight for its life after switching to performance mode. It was a bit of a shame to experience these beautiful handmade environments in this condition. It's something that must be fixed before release. Echoing Lies of P in terms of gameplay, Anotria is a mashup of Bloodborne's aggressive combat with hints of Sekiro, as you break your enemy's posture for a critical hit through a combination of attacking and parrying. Let me add a little bit of spice. Equip four abilities called Mask Lines, Anotria's version of spells. These charge up through attacking enemies, but the real unique selling point is the loadout slots. The player can effectively create three builds to switch between on the fly, customizing your equipped mask, weapons, perks, mask lines, and items, like throwing forks. Throw another fork at me, you're gonna get fucking rocked! I love that the developers addressed a common complaint. Finding a cool weapon that doesn't fit your build and created an integrated gameplay solution. The idea is you're like an actor switching between different roles. One loadout might be a rapier dex build. One might be a big fucking sword strength build. Speaking of big fucking swords, don't forget to check the link in the description for the new merch. Despite multiple loadout slots encouraging experimentation, I was confused at the high stat requirements for most items. It felt counterintuitive funneling you into one build. I was excited to use the Curtis mask after defeating him. However, I didn't have the correct stat spread to use it effectively. And it was too late to commit my level ups to using it. Even the perks in the Path of Innovators had stat requirements. By the end of the demo, it was restrictive, making the loadout slots feel obsolete. It becomes more apparent when you realize the mask lines for each loadout charge individually. For example, the second mask you unlock does more damage with ranged abilities. So if you wanted to spontaneously switch loadout mid-fight to utilize a ranged mask line with this character, you would have to charge it up in advance. I'd rather the charge was shared across the loadouts for each slot. Charge up slot 1 on your melee loadout, then switch to the range loadout to maximise damage. Fitting the game's fast-paced nature and saving the player from juggling 12 mask lines across 3 loadouts, whilst giving you an incentive to switch during combat. Now turn that frown upside down. Let's end on a positive. The way status effects are handled in Anotria were interesting. With 4 in total, each one offers both a buff and debuff when active on the player or enemy. For example, this inflicts dizzy and is procced through wine. Its effects simulate being drunk. 
increasing your damage and stamina regen, but lowering your defenses. Pickled onions or something, like the Agberg, whatever it is, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> The wise words. The potential for a drunken swordmaster build is insane. The trade-off makes status effects less of a pain, integrating them smoothly into gameplay. You even have the option to build your character around one of these in the path of innovators. Inotria's delay is a healthy decision for the game, just a few more months to cook before it's ready. Fingers crossed it reaches its full potential. Have you had a chance to check out the demo? Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one. Arrivederci.